good. Glory to Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh. The Lord is your strength. Thank you all so much uh, for your prayers yesterday, your love yesterday, your messages yesterday. Um, really, 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 really felt the love and uh, the and your prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, truly looking forward to uh, today with the prophetic doctor. Uh, sis, I think it's catching up. It's catching up. Someone asked something and they were about you and they were like, oh, um, yeah, with the uh, prophetic doctor, I said, <laughs> this is nice. This is good. This is lovely. So if you walk around and someone's like, oh, uh, hi, um, you must be the prophetic doctor. Just know they are one of us. They are from us. <laughs> awesome. Good morning, everyone. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of God is risen upon you. And not only is it risen upon you, that glory will not be hidden. That glory will be seen in the name of Jesus. Come on. Would you make that declaration right off the bat? Would you declare the glory of God will be seen upon my life? Come on. Make that declaration. The glory of the Lord will be seen in me, on me. Come on. Does you know we talk about the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not want one of the things the shepherd does that anointing of oil that psalm 23 talks about it's not simply to pour the oil on you it is to smear it on you to rub it think about when a nigerian mom is moisturizing the skin of her child just just i want you to picture <laughs> it's a good picture hallelujah how many of you have gone to school and your face looks glorious it's like you've been to the mountaintop your face is shining hallelujah they did not hold back on that vaseline they did not hold back on that uh, cocoa butter hallelujah dryness was banished from your life glory to jesus hallelujah amen amen all right so i need you to know that that anointing was heavy amen glory to god and so i need you to know that you are anointed you are anointed with glory that anointing is smeared upon you it's smeared dry. exactly mima dryness is banished from your life because the glory of god come on it is not it, you're not gold plated so you're not glory plated that glow you know there is gold plated you are not you're not you're not glory plated that glory is all over that glory is all over like if they scratch your surface is glory hallelujah it's not did you hear me you're not glory plated that it's real glory it's real glory it's real glory come on it's real glory it's it is real glory ever increasing glory in the name of the lord jesus who is the christ father we thank you we thank you we thank you we give you praise we magnify your name we give you all honor all adoration you are a good, good, good father. Thank you, father, for of the increase of your fullness, of your fullness. Sir. We have received grace up on grace. We have received grace up on grace. We have received grace upon grace. And so we live in that grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba, in Jesus' name. Awesome. Just quickly, for those of you that... um have filled out the form to be with us at Contend. Please make sure you are doing the necessary things. You filled out your form, your, um, I think you agreed your payment scheme, just so that you're not scrambling towards the end of the year. It is good time to be intentional about securing your space for Contend UK, hallelujah. Content UK is happening in August summer. Someone help me prophesy that it is happening. It is happening. It is happening. Glory to God. We were there last year. Um, sis, are you still trying to get that, those balloons? Because I'm seeing the balloons. <laughs> Today must be the day that the balloons come. All right. For those of you, UK content happening in August. Um, for those of you who don't know information, we'll share that information again. It'll be good to see you in person. There's no Zoom in this matter is in person that we come and we retreat for a week uh well 
five days, four nights, and it's always a glorious time. Um, and then for those of you in America, Contend Amer North America is also happening in October to the glory of Jesus, to the glory of Jesus. Last year, we had a we had a great time, a taster, an amazing time in God's presence. Um, so uh, we come again uh, by the grace of God, and we, we believe we'll go further into all that God has for you in North America, in North America. Um, I'm hoping this time I actually get to see a bear, but that's just my own um my own thing anyway glory to jesus hallelujah all right those are my announcement oh yeah soul detox summit soul detox summit is happening on the 11th of february so all you soul detoxers in the uk make plans to be with us in london um on the 11th of february more details of that will be released soon. A time of worship, prayer. Apostle TJ will be with us. Uh, Reverend Adi will be with us. I'm looking at Dr. G, but we'll see how that goes. Amen. Let's come in person. Let's 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 commune in person. Hallelujah. All right, guys. What is our scripture? We're gonna bring the prophetic doctor out uh, to take us further into all that God has downloaded to her, uh, and uh, so. What is, but before we come, we want to make sure we're good students of the word. What is that scripture we have been beholding? Where, where, have, we, where have we gone to? Come and talk to me. Type it up. What is the scripture? What is the scripture? For the past couple of days, you've been in a particular scripture, juicing it out. What is that scripture? Glory to Jesus, I believe. Come on. What is the scripture? Fabulous. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. Do you know what? At least I'm only asking you what the reference is. Imagine if I said recite it. We need to get back into memorizing. How many of you are going to put that as part of your uh, spiritual growth this year? To memorize scripture. To memorize. You know, it's not only Sudoku that you should be doing for your brain. It's not only Sudoku, you know memorizing scripture is good for your spiritual health and your mental health come on now hallelujah all right prophetic doctor good morning to you good can morning. i ask a favor yes please when you go on social media and can you edit your bio okay oh, i was like listening attentively oh dear <laughs> And write the prophetic doctor, is that? <laughs> yes. Right. We're, we're, we're trying to spread this. Mm, glory. You don't have to be, into, it's not intellectualism or spirituality. Your spirituality can be intellectual and your intellectualism can be spiritual. Oh, Jesus. So please, my, my, um, I guess my godson, his name is Luke. His name is Luke Isaiah. So Luke hyphen Isaiah. So I've been calling him the prophetic doctor and my God, this boy is brilliant. Wow. At the age of, is it two or three? He's able to like do his math sums wow. at a, like a higher degree. So I've been speaking prophetic doctor. So now I'm going to be saying, hey, look, there is, there is those that have gone ahead of you that are prophetic doctors. You know, I just, I don't know how to put the acronym for your PhD. I have prophetic, I have the doctor. I need to figure out what the H is, but I'll be back. It, it, will, it will come. It will come. God bless you. Handing over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rev. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope you were well. What an awesome time we've been having and we will yet have today if you will just join me as we begin to bless the name of the lord so just thank god wherever you are thank him for another day that we have gathered bless his holy name give him praise magnify the lord our god the bible says it's a good thing to thank him it's amazing to thank him. So just lift your voice and worship him. Bless his holy name. As I was praying earlier on, I just had this, this overwhelming sense of God's love. And I was just like, wow, Lord, I just love you. You are amazing. You are wonderful. You are glorious. There is none like you. Father, thank you for being you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for breaking the gates of bronze. Thank you for tearing them asunder. 
Thank you for the new song in our spirits. Thank you for joy unspeakable, full of glory. Thank you for being good. Thank you, you were good, good father. Thank you, you were amazing. Every time we stand, you are indescribable. Jesus, we have come to worship you. We've come to say, there is none like you in all the earth. You were good. You were kind, my God. We've never seen your kind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We lift up our voices this morning to say, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for us for me, for us, for everyone. Thank you, precious spirit of the living God. We magnify your name. We exalt. Thank you for the life. Thank you for the strength you have given us even to fast. Thank you for the ability to wake up at this time to pray, to press in. Lord, to come for daily manner. We give you glory. We honor you. We reverence you. We say there is none like you, precious Jesus. Let our praises rise to you uh, as incense this morning, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Let it be your pleasing worship. Let it be pleasing in your sight. Let it come off like a whiff and you're like, oh, where is this coming from this morning? Lord, it's ascending, oh God, in from the very best of us, from our hearts, oh God. For those on their knees saying you were good, Good, you have good for those on their bed saying thank you, Jesus. Father, as a church, as a community, as individuals, collectively, as a family, we are saying thank you. We are saying you are mighty, you are glorious in all your ways. Who can do the things that you do? No one can do the things that you do. We have come, oh God, because you beat us to come. Who can approach you if you don't open the gates for them to come to you? Thank you for your love, oh God, that is unspeakable. Lord, that you took us, you you reached out and pulled us in and brought us into the fold. We thank you, oh God. Thank you for the blood that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel that we can stand. And the blood of speaking and making intercession. And every time we thank you for who you are, we are remembered of who you have made us to be. Because we see ourselves in you. We see your majesty, your glory, oh God. We see the reflection of who we are in you. We thank you. We love you, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We reverence you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, in the morning you will hear our voices. At noontime you will hear our voices. At night you will hear our voices. And every time in between you will continue to hear our voices, oh God. In the meeting you will hear it in our souls. Our souls will keep responding as you pull us closer to you. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Just go ahead and love on him. Go ahead and worship him. Zivram paradakate. Manta keredia no sure ikate la bahate. Hey, they don't know what you mean to us, oh God. They don't understand what you, what you mean and how you've translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. They don't know. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love that is pulling us closer. Thank you for your love, even to the person that feels that they don't have a place there. They're still trying to find where they belong, their feet. And you said, I am but the one that came and died for you. I am your Lord. I am and the I am to you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. They don't know what you mean to us. They don't know what you mean to us. 
Why would we fear when we have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why would we care what people say? They don't know what you mean to us. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. I hope that's your song as well to him. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. We celebrate your majesty. We celebrate your sovereignty. You are the one for us, Jesus. We celebrate you, oh God. We love you dearly. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us. In you we live, we move, we have our being. Thank you for bringing us even to a wealthy place. Thank you for calling us your own. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We love you, Jesus. And the Lord says that he is your redeemer, your kinsman. He is the one that is repairing that which was broken in your family. And that you've always thought that you were the black sheep of the family. But he says you are not. That he called you, he made you, he knows you and he loves you. That he loves you. And he's singing songs of love and deliverance over you. And that your past will never count. That is not your works. That it's not your works. Your works don't exactly interest him. That it's you he wants. That is you he's after. Thank you for your love that is just enveloping somebody this morning. We give you praise, Jesus. We magnify your name, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. Oh, I hope you, you know, I just love that song. You're the one for me. Like every single time, you're the one. You are the one for us. Um, <clears throat> the Lord has been taking us through um, the book of Colossians 2, um, from verse 2. Um, and there was also something he laid in my heart, two scriptures we'll look at today that would help us to understand why he led us down that path. Um, and there are sets of clues he wants to give us today to unpack. If you could turn with me to the book of Matthew, it's it's going to be, you'll, you'll, you'll be amazed at this, but it's Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 38. And there's something I want to show us there, Matthew 24, 38, thank you. And these are just clues that the Lord has been sharing and giving concerning why he's doing what he's doing, concerning the preparation he's taking us through, concerning the reasons um, that we'll be hearing things happening all around the world and the things that you would yet hear. And it says, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. I'll just read it again. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. So if you were wondering, okay, collusions to you, that was great. Why was the Lord encouraging us? Why was he reminding us about it? And he, he did that because he wants to tell us about what is about to happen. There are keys here for a season and for this season that we're entering. The days before the flood, for as in the days before the flood, if you go back and look at what happened before the flood and you can mirror what happened during those times of what, what is happening now, you understand why he's asking us, our hearts to be knit together in love why he's saying, I want you to be encouraged and I want your full assurance of understanding to be full so that you will know what is hidden in me so that you can stand the things that are coming because the days 
before the flood, there were things that happened. There was so much evil in the land, you know, the Nephilims and all that. There was so much happening. And we're beginning to see those kinds of things now. And he's saying, for the days before the flood, I want you to prepare. Your fasting is not just for you. Your fast is more, is more than you, is beyond you is a season of preparation. There is something that God wants to deposit inside of you and he's expanding your capacity to prepare for these things such that it's encoded in your spirit and your spirit can carry it when the time comes because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we hear the word of God, our spirit responds to it even when sometimes we're like, okay, I'm not really sure where this is going, but you know, your spirit gets it so he says was in the days before the flood the things that happened then are beginning to happen now and the second clue after that is they were eating and drinking yes we're not eating and drinking now like but what he was referring to then was the complacency in the spirit the complacency people thought that it was okay normal times they, they just gave into gluttony. They gave into consumption of things that were not even of God, not just, he's not even just talking about eating food, normal food and drinking. He's talking about the doctrine of demons that will come. He's talking about the drinking, the things that people will begin to consume and they will become intoxicated by a different kind of knowledge and wisdom that is not of God. And he wants us to prepare that when the days sought us in those times, the flood, we know, we see the eating and drinking and we're not carried away by just physical eating and drinking, but we are, can see the spirit behind what is happening and we are prepared. So we have for the days before the flood, first key, signaling a time. And then he shows us what will happen then. And he gives us another one. There will be marrying and giving in marriage. This is symbolic. Every time we see marriage in the Bible, every time, and I'll tell you where all this is going. Every time we see marriage, every time we see marrying in the Bible, very symbolic. And not just about, you know, what happened when the fallen angels came, but the bride and the bridegroom. The signal is for us, the bride and the bridegroom. He put it there to remind us, the church. He wants to draw a thread there. Remember the five virgins, some were prepared, some were not. And then some people had to go and buy. But he's saying marriage, marrying and giving in marriage. Like by all means, all that is great. He's also saying you, the church, what happens during the season of marrying and giving in marriage? There is preparation the married supper of the lamb. Now the, the enemy wants to hijack even marriage and giving in marriage such that we don't place premium. Ah, marriage is dear to God's heart. He, he instituted it, hello, he instituted it and he called us his bride. So he's saying to us, I want you to be ready. I want you to be encouraged that your lover, your groom is coming. I want your heart to be malleable. I want to, I want, I want to be the only one you 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 think about. So that if you look at the system of marriage that is in the world, you still understand that I am giving you something better, and there is also sacrifice to it. He gave us a blueprint. Now you see the string that connects all of this as we read on, and he says, until the day Noah entered the ark. Noah is the template. The ark is the blueprint. Noah represents the prophetic builder that he has called us to, do, to be and what he has called us to do. The ark represents our lives, the body, you know, because we are the ark now. Arcs of preservation, arcs that can carry him. Rev was talking about memorizing scripture. Yes, because you will also find scripture in the ark. You will find these things in the ark. Now, Noah was a prophetic builder. We're not just fasting because we want to fast. We're fasting because there are levels of prophetic building God is doing in this season. He wants to show us some people he will give fresh blueprints. Some people he will call you to continue the work others have done. Some people he will call to do things differently. 
um, and to extend the legacy. Now, there are things that are going to happen. There are wells that will be unstopped. The wells of generations that have been dug, even in this country, will be unstopped. And it's already happening. There will be that revival that will come on the earth and you'll wonder. And simultaneously, because as it happens, the enemy likes to draw parallels. So we need to be alert to the parallels that will come. As these wells are being unstopped, he would also release new fountains. Now, these fountains also have their templates and blueprints. So we need to understand how, what we need to do. Noah received the, the schematics for the ark and he started to build. We are now the ark. We now need to build our lives. And the first level of building he's calling us to is internal structures. That is why we're in a soul detox. The internal structures in your life are things he wants to build, rebuild. Sometimes when you're building, you have to tear down to actually build. You know, you have to tear down some things. Sometimes there's really nothing. The foundation is shaky and he's like, do you know what? Let's build, let's put scaffolding. We need to start building from the beginning. But he's asking us that in this season, I want you to pay close attention to the things I am laying, the signs, the clues, and to begin to build. Now, the second scripture that we would, God will help us to stay on so that here we can now see when we talked about wisdom, the different kinds of wisdom, the, the things that God wants us to do and build with wisdom, the deeds of wisdom. We talked about discernment. We talked about sound judgment. We talked about creativity and you know, problem solving. We would then see how with this prophetic building, God wants us to prepare. Please turn with me. I would like us to read from the message translation. Galatians 3, Galatians 6. The message translation, if you would. And I love the scripture, Galatians 6, 5. The Lord will give us grace to unpack as much of it. Galatians 6. From verse four to five, I'll start from four. Message translation. And it says, make a careful exploration of who you are. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. We'll try to take this in bits as we go along, but let me, let's just read it through. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given, and then sink yourself into that. First, a careful exploration like a geologist of who you are, your identity. That's why he said, in whom are hidden. For you to begin to explore yourself, you are hidden in Christ. So that exploration is also of Christ. The careful exploration, as you do that, even in geology, there is sounding. You need to understand. I remember I talked about internal structures. We'll look at that because the richer you are inside, the fuller you become and the stronger you can pour out. A careful exploration so that you don't sabotage. When you do not carefully um, explore or understand who you are, especially from a generational perspective. That's why I said the fast is not just for you. The fast is beyond you. The fast is more than you. The fast is, is a lot. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that to encourage you, really encourage you back to collusion suit, to encourage you. If you exploit from a generational perspective, especially as a prophetic builder, and he has called you to be the repairer of the breach, you will now know exactly what covenants are still speaking and not speaking. You will know what to ask. You will know what wells to go and unstop or to leave or to block. And then you will know what to build. And in carefully exploring your life, there are three things you have to pay attention to or you might want to use to carefully explore who you are. And this is where as we go, you are praying, Lord, give me grace. Give me understanding to to. To see as you see, 
You also need to see yourself the way God sees you so you can not talk to yourself the way you've been talking to yourself. Ah. So that you can, because he said to Gideon, oh, mighty man. And Gideon was like, he said, who? <laughs> Gideon was like, I don't know who you're talking to. That's He did not have that understanding. He didn't. The man at the gate, beautiful, that said, son of David, have mercy. That guy tapped into something. He tapped into a, a covenant, a generation. Jesus stopped in his tracks and was like, uh -uh, mm -mm. I have to stop. I have to stop. Three things you have to use to explore. And as you're exploring this with the word, in prayer, money, skill, and time. Money, where you have to invest in yourself. Please go for content. It was amazing last year. Don't, the money don't for is it, is the exploration of yourself. Four days, five days, four nights. You need money to invest in yourself. You need skill. The skill is not often your own skill. In some cases, yours is needed. But you'd also need the skilled hands that will help you explore. Coaches, mentors, people around you that tell you, pour into you, you know, that you understand so that you will not go and put your head in the lap of Delilah. And she's rocking you to sleep on the bed of convenience when the Lord has called you into a place where you should be ruler, judge, and you're in the head of Delilah and you're making excuses for sin. Because you don't have a careful exploration of who you are. So your prayer is, Lord, give me deeper understanding. Who am I? Who have you called me to be? What are the depths of me that I am yet to explore? Ah, you didn't make a mistake. And that's why you, he, he didn't make a mistake. It's not about how you arrived. You arrived. Kind of. Some people are still stuck in how they, were, uh, they got here. You know? My mom did this, my dad did this, even David. Do you know David was conceived in iniquity? He said it himself. Read the scripture. That's why Jesse did not bring him when the prophet came. <laughs> you think they just forgot him. The guy was in something, came from somewhere, you know. That's why. He was like, ah, this man, he's seen well. He's seen that there's somebody else. Okay, let's go and bring that one. Who knows? David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. Money, skill, time, exploring who you are so that you are, you will understand so that when you go into places, atmospheres, you take charge because you know that you have walked in because you know you, you, you're careful who you covenant yourself with. Ah, you, you're careful. There are people around you that we can, you're finished detox. You will now go, the same people you left 40 days, you will now go back. No, it's a lie. It's not going to happen. Listen. It's, it's part of it is the pattern, understanding. So we covenant yourself to people that have your best interest, people with skill that will pull it out of you. You know, as you're doing the Bible study with Reverend, she's like, yes, memorize the scripture, get into the scripture, let the scripture marinate inside of you so that anytime they call you, you're sleeping, you awake, something, the scripture is in you then you need time. Time helps you to understand the exploration process and the empowerment process for your life. Time. Then you're able to ask for speed in the places where you require time to grow. If you feel like, oh my God, I'm, you know, after a while I stop saying I don't have time. No, we have time. You see that? We have it. <laughs> I know it's something we say. Remember we talked about earthly knowledge, earthly wisdom, but then our times are in God's hands. We have time. We have time. The person that made time is the one. We have time. He can, he can enter into our past, our future, and he will come out and give you something that will bridge the gap. Come on. Your words have to align with who you are. Ah, your words have to align. Immediately you sense you're out of place because you explore, you carefully explore. You sense something has come in, you know. You know, you know, you cultivate internal structures. He, he said the careful exploration of who you are. So you know when your alarm is coming out of you, you know when something is going off. 
you know, you begin to deploy intercessors. You're building family structures. You're building your family. You don't wait until the family comes. You begin to build them now and begin to say, now we will serve the Lord as for me and my family. You're building a nation. You're building, you're raising people. You're discipling people for the kingdom. People are reading your life. A careful explore. You want, we, we need to know what's inside you. What are your instructions that guide you? What are the things that school you? What are the things that reveal you? What is the strength of your communion with God? What is the strength? Where do you sit as a prophetic builder? All of us are building. There are different places we will build and at different times. There are different um, things and skills that we'll require to build, to help us. We need discernment. Discernment. So that you will know at what trading routes to enter. Hey, you see, that's why we needed the wisdom of God. So that you would know there are trading routes in the spirit. There are tables. There are tables. There are times when things happen and I'm begin, I begin to pray. And I say, ah, Lord, ah, there is something I need to access. And there, I, where, where is the pathway of the spirit? How do I enter? How do I enter the mind of God? And as you stay, something opens. Ah, and then you know, you know, you become a careful exploration. If we ask you, all through last year, did you track and look at when things happened, went off, went on in your life? Are you able to see those patterns? Are you able to? So he says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given, the allocation of tasks. What have you been called to? What measure? To whom? At what time? What measure? What is the task? And there are times when genuinely you're like, I don't know. Stay in the house of God, you will find it. Stay in the word, you will find it. I saw something when we were praying. I sensed the Lord saying that he wants to establish people in this season. I saw a particular lady on here. I don't know, but feel your name starts with N and I really don't look at names. And he's saying, I want, you, I want to establish you in this season so that you will know that you are rooted. So you won't keep moving from place to place because you feel you haven't found, you know, you want to get from. So but he says, I want to establish you. There is a divine allocation of destiny. There is a divine allocation of how to do something, what to do, where we are called to do it. You have to find your allocated task. You have to find it. It requires consistency. It requires consistency. And he says, sink yourself into it. Sink yourself into it. Are you ready to sink yourself into it this year? And you are like, I'm all in, God. I'm all in. Sink yourself into it. What does that even mean? How can you sink yourself into something such that, I always tell my people, I say to them, Every screen will be played in heaven. And I want to, I want when we're watching, because there's no time there. So there will be time in quotes for us to see every single analysis of your life. You want to be able to say that I, I, I served wholeheartedly. I did. The full measure of assurance, of understanding. You're singing, sing with all your heart. You're loving the Lord. Love with all your heart. You're in the ministry of helps. Help with all your heart. I believe this detox is a time where you and the Holy Spirit will just begin to move in sync and he would help you confront certain things. And as he brings them to you, he now reminds us, don't be too impressed with yourself. <laughs> I read it. I love it. I was like, ah! Sink yourself into it. Don't be impressed with yourself. Do you know what? I love it, actually. Don't have an unhealthy sense of satisfaction. I feel like I need to see that. say that again. Don't have an unhealthy sense of satisfaction. Listen, some people, 
man, we did this fast, Rev, you know what? We're not going to go. And then you're like, ah, I, I, I deserve it, a reward. When war is warfare. Many people, many people's entities and empires have died because, because they became satisfied. Immediately satisfaction entered, then they just, you know, they stopped desiring God. They stopped putting wood on the altar. They stopped yearning for him. They stopped asking for him. And I don't know, it just, you know, until we get to the point of dominion, you don't stop. Until we get to the point of dominion, until you can replicate and rebuild on a global scale, you don't stop. You don't stop. You don't stop. You keep going for the Lord. I'm not saying now you're not like, hey, she has killed. Oh my God, what's she saying? I want to rest. There's rest in the Lord. There is rest in the Lord. There is absolute rest in him. What I'm saying to you is, as a builder for the Lord, as you are building your life, as you are building your family, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Yesterday, no, yeah, because this is a new day. I saw a flash of somebody here that is teaching. And I read, I don't know your professions. And this is not randomly putting out that there is a teacher. I literally saw someone that here as a teacher. And you teach, okay, we don't have middle school here, but you teach children. And part of what you have been thinking is how you can also, what more you can do. And I was just having that conversation with the Lord as I was seeing this. I was like, okay, so if they're having this conversation in their head, what more? And he said, no, that there is so much more that if they can bring mindfulness into the classroom, surely you, you have a creative dimension that you can bring in that will serve as a system for the kingdom. You don't have to bring in the name Jesus, which you should, but if you can't, that's fine. But you as a person can build for the Lord, even in that place. So if you're in the school, look out for maybe clubs, look out for something you can institute or start something that will be for the Lord, where it is your allocation, then in that allocation, you can erect a structure so that your sweat does not go to the, to the enemy. Everything, you sweat just to him. No, even in the circular space, we can erect monoliths for the Lord, replication on a global level. So that the measure of our, of our godliness is unto God. Don't give in to demonic satisfaction. It will weaken you. Every demonic satisfaction broken in the name of Jesus. Everything that makes us want to stay, want to rest, want to just, you know, we just sit broken in the name of Jesus. Such that the, the whiff, the smell that he has for us will not go out into the, uh, the enemy and say, oh, don't, don't worry, they want to. No, we go for the Lord. We give him that which he says, even the little, huh? you know, I've always been frightened by that. No, not frightened, but you know what I mean? By that scripture. The talents. Hmm. The man, the Lord said to him, wicked and unreasonable. He called him a wicked man. Collected the one he had. He said, even the little you have will be taken. Ah, ah, ah. So don't say it's small. Be, start. Start. Don't give in to demonic satisfaction. So, <laughs> exactly, truly. I think that's sometimes you're like, I really don't. Okay, start. So somebody is building something, join the person. Do you know how many people built with Nehemiah? Oh, I didn't even go into I, I would have run you through all the prophetic builders from Nehemiah to Joseph that built um, storehouses of provision. Then we go to Deborah. Then we go to jail. Then we go to so many others. And we see, and there are three things in this season. He wants us to build upper rooms of encounters. If you can't build in your workplace, then build outside. Call people, let them come. If it's dance, you can teach. Teach dance. Do that. But don't give in to that thing that tells us that, you know what? I would rest, I will relax, and that's it. Ah, I saw something today. Let me see if I can find it. And he talked about the, I think it was the Amorites. He said he was not given to war. And because he was not given to war, his scent did not change. I said, whoa. If you read it in the King James, it's actually very sweet. He was not given to war. Because he was not given to war, his scent did not change. And that means 
he just remained normal. Ah, he just, nothing about him, you know, translated into much. My goodness. Ah, we'll distract. Okay, I can find that for you later and I'll send it to Rev. Or you can Google scholars. If you Google it, you will find it. You know, but it's important that we sink ourselves into it. Don't be impressed with yourself. And then he says, don't compare yourselves with others. Don't compare yourselves with others or to others. Comparison, as we know it, is the thief of joy, is the thief of humility, is the thief of strength, is the thief of everything good that you have. When you begin to measure yourself by the grace you have been given, no, we measure ourselves by God. Every other ungodly measurement will make us miss the mark. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is missing the mark. If you miss the mark by 0.001, that is sin. Sin is missing the mark. It's not that, oh, if you go and look at the word sin, Cain and Abel, the Lord said to Abel, watch your heart. Sin is crouching at the door of your heart. It wants to have mastery over you. That word mastery also means it wants to intermingle with you. It wants to have its way with you. And when they say have its way with you, it's that biblical term of, you know, sexual intercourse so that it, you, it has, then when it has its way with you, everything you give birth to as a result of comparison and sin then becomes polluted. You see why Noah was the blueprint. He was a righteous man. He came from the stock that was pure. And that's why he wants us to be knit together in love. He wants us to go back to the Lord Jesus so that everything we do is clean, is clear from him, that it's not been mingled with the world. It does not look like the world at any point. We don't do things in the world and then we present and ask God to bless it. He doesn't know. No. He, it's it not, no. Comparison steals from you your joy, your humility, and then you want you leave the one allocated to you and then you begin to think like others and want to be like others. He says, don't compare yourselves to and not to others. Glory to God. I feel like, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really sorry. Is this a hard word, but it's well. Anyway, don't compare yourselves with others. He says, each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Whoa, each of us, I'm putting myself, each of us must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Each of us must take responsibility, the creative best. What is the creative best? The Bible says, and the Lord made man. He made this and he said it was good. Every time he made something, he said it was good. Every time he made something, he said it was good. Every time he made something, he said it was good. Immediately he said it was good. That word good for us, what he means is tov. It has something inside it that has the ability to reproduce of itself. It has the ability to multiply. It has the ability to create and procreate. He said it was good. Go and study that word good. Tov, T-O-V, it can reproduce. So when he says you are good, he, he knows. He says in you, there is so much more. When business closes, one door closes, seven more can open. You will not sit down on your oars and wait and be like, oh, I, I wish I can find this scripture. Uh, that the, their sense just remains the same. No, your creative best. Building is about getting creative. Be creative with the life that you've been given sometimes to build. Like I say, you have to break down. You break down. You break down certain things, foundational problems. You go back to the beginning. You have to dismantle. You strip back so that you can see what the foundational issues are. And then you start to build again. And as you begin to build, you start to look. What are some of these things so that I don't reproduce them in my own life? For you to really be an effective prophetic builder, you have to understand the capacity of Tov that is inside you. 
Do you have the people that would help you to carry? Do you have the systems? Even if you don't, the Lord will always send to you. He would give you that. He will give you that for which you need. And that's why he started with a careful exploration. Like geologists, we go deep and we begin to search the scripture because written in the scripture is the blueprint for us. Is inside there. And he says, and I have called you forth and I have called you as my very own. And as you begin to search and as you begin to yearn and as you begin to call me, I would show you that for which I made you. I will birth in you the creative ability to become like I am. Your life will begin to reflect because he made you good. You are tough. Says these are the things I have encoded in your DNA. And with fire, it will come forth. With fire, it will come forth. The detox is that removing. And now he wants to begin to set you up to build. And that's why he started us out with an encouragement so that your heart will be ready to carry the weight of the work that is coming. That you can say, indeed, Lord, here am I. If you're looking for a man, here I am. If you're looking for someone to send, ah, I'm here. If you're looking for somebody to build, Lord, ah, I'm here. Look no further. Can he depend on you for your generation, for your family? Can he trust you? I need to find that scripture. It's going to I want to use a word. We don't use that kind of word, but let me find it. Ah, glory to God. Are you being blessed? Glory to, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we will pray. Thank you. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Eh, Mela Bacarada, son de Veriango, Tapara de Sivena Coededi, Rede Paso Varanti Caba. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We bless your name, O God. She parade Velens, Corande Peca, E Capaso Tabara de Velen de Cobella Hunting. We will not rest on our oars in the name of Jesus. We will not rest on our oars, Jesus. Gama Sura de Veleba, Mantaca Revile Sora da Capain, Ene Campare de Ville Sora e Can de Chile Mendacom. Father, we will stand, O God. You will give us the grace huh? as we begin to go through the careful exploration of the deposits of grace you have inside of us huh? and who you have called us to be. My Father, my God, let the excavation begin, no oh God. The things that people have refused to touch, huh? the things that they have refused to shift, huh? Lord, we pray, let there be a shift, oh God, in mindset. Huh? Let structures, oh God, that have been erected by the wisdom that is not of you be dismantled in the name of Jesus. Bring your people, oh God, even into depths of understanding, my God, that they understand that the reason you are taking them through journeys and through pathways is so that they can arrive at the place of destiny. Lord, let them arrive at destiny in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to tune you. And as he begins to tune you and he begins to strip her, everything that is not of him, that you will arrive at the place called destiny, but you would see like Noah, you will build. Like Joseph, you will decree uh, and you will set up silos that will feed nations, not just your family, but even people around you. And that every demonic satisfaction that has been orchestrated from the kingdom of darkness uh, to limit your expression in this season is broken off of you. In the name of Jesus. 
Rema sura da vali anka to zele vela barra da vita ba man takabarate asking for grace that you be able to build through multiple generations that you will build and you will build and you will carry ire kando sare di la bakaya that the work you do everything you lay your hands to do that the clarity of the spirit rest upon it even at this time man takura sere vele anda kodi Lord we thank you eb. Let clarity begin to come even in the place of prayer. Let signs, oh God, be, be, begin to be visible. And Lord, you people, you will make them a sign and a wonder even in this season, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the deposit of grace, for the activation, yes. For the activation, oh God. Hey, Masande Kola Zindi Verade Kapai, Ekatamenda Barasari Velis Karodeki, Rebanta Pasa Kerabane Sere Kila Sata, Ilango Para de Velian Tokora Lementeka. Lord, we thank you, Matuka Para Sante Veriakatem, even as you are in Christ. He says, I have set the system of Christ as an example for you that you that you think you were out of place because of the circumstance of your birth. You are not out of place. You are in his perfect will, in his perfect will. He came as a redeemer and he has redeemed you even from the curse and the shame. Thank you, Jesus. Masari dara barede zone vila hake. Rika basanda barade kele anusara dabakam. Balekaske, Rigatum Brandi Fisarada Gabayakati. Lord, we thank you, Kibaraba Sura in the Vila Shantaba, Makere de Vela Masanta, Paruleke de Gila Hakati. Oh, that we thank you that in this time and in this season, we understand the shifts that are happening. In Jesus' name, one last scripture. One last scripture. Hosea 13.13. 13. Glory to God. Hosea 13.13. 13. And before you tag me the message translation person, not really. I just, just like, there's something you see in certain verses and translations that they just stay with you. This is our prayer. And my prayer for you. <laughs> Hosea 13, 13. If you find it in the message translation, please open to the message translation. I want us to, <laughs> I want us to look at the message translation together because there's something that you see there. It says, when the birth pangs signaled it was time to be born, Ephraim was too stupid to come out of the womb. When the passage into life opened up, he did not show. Wow. You'll be like, I thought that that's a bit harsh for a child. You know, but if you look at it prophetically, that was how and how he missed that season. When the birth pang signaled it was time to be born. And that's why God was asking us to pray for wisdom. That every time birth pang signal, the wisdom of God in us is activated and you know what to do. You won't be the one to say, oh, no, no, I'm not. No, wisdom is at work in you. Every time an opportunity comes that is of God, hmm, of God, of God, the wisdom of God that we have prayed and will continue to pray is activated in you and you will know exactly what to do. You will step up to the plate huh? and as you step up, it will be that which will announce you and catapult you into the next realm that you have been praying for. You will not be like Ephraim in the name of Jesus. When the passage into life soon opens up, we will be there. Hey. When the passage into life opens up, we'll be there. We will be there. Consistency will keep us. As the Lord reveals, ah, as we wait on him, like Noah, we will stay in that place. People are laughing, mocking. We will stay with the word of God. We will stay and be, continue to pray. And as we begin to stay in his word, the wisdom is activated and our steps are ordered. And the Lord propels us even into the path of destiny in the name of Jesus. But we understand that it is given to us 
us in this time and in this season to understand the times and seasons. So we decree and declare that wisdom is available to us and we know the times and seasons and we enter prophetically into every time, every season. We will not miss the time of visitation at all. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. I just want you to pray in the spirit. Lord, we thank you. Redeba Serra da Baha, Manto Copa, Redede de Shila Barada Catan. The infallibility of God's word is able to keep us. The infallibility of his word is able to strengthen us. The fullness of the stature of the Lord is at work in us. We understand the pathways of life. We understand the things that God wants and has for us. We understand the levels that he's calling us to. We are intentional in this season in following God. We will keep walking with him. We will keep running with him. The heavens over us are open in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Hey, Sheila Bakata Zidando Parade Sila Kata Emenda Vera Sare de Vilan Koradi Barade Skaranda Vakan. Oh, we will not stop until we see that for which he has promised us, until there's an overflow in our spirit, until indeed we have replaced everything that does not look like God with the intimacy of his word and of his presence, until we have pruned everything that is not like God in the name of Jesus, because light is coming, and when light comes, Comes, order comes, the order of location, the order of time, the order of place, the order of settings, uh, until light comes in the name of Jesus, until light shows us uh, that which is and which should be in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Until there is an, an interaction with God, until we can read the counsel of heaven over our lives, until we can see what God is saying, we won't stop, we won't give in until the encounters become great, even in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that the Lord will be the anchor for your life that the Lord will be the anchor for your life. He will be your shield. He will be your exceedingly great reward. He will bring you even to the fullness of the stature of Christ in the name of Jesus. And as you do the careful exploration, you will begin to see, you will begin to align yourself with the order of God, with the order of heaven. You will ask God that in this season, he will touch your eyes again. He will touch your ears again. He will give you understanding. You will give your yourself deep into the things of God. You will be taken by God. God will consecrate your ears. Your ears will hear the sounds that come from heaven and the sounds over your family. He will consecrate your mouth. Your mouth would utter the things that are of God because you will pull things from the realm of the spirit even with your utterance because your utterance will be sound coded and you would have the right sound to unlock seasons and atmosphere and you will never be with out what to do because it is given to us to know and to do and we have the keys to the kingdom and that everyone assigned to us begins to move with us even in this season in the name of Jesus you begin to pray that the expression of God inside of you and from you will be as ordained by him in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. You will no longer live your life to chance. You will no longer live your life to chance. In the name of Jesus, these days, fresh counsel from the Lord, fresh fire of intervention, fresh fire to recreate, fresh fire to produce, fresh fire to build, as Moses did, as 
he got the blueprint for the ark. You will get the blueprint for your marriage, for your family. You will understand the pathways of the spirit. You will know what to do and how to go about it. In the name of Jesus, you will meditate more than you talk. Because every time you talk, you are dispensing life. And you will dispense life. You will be as a spring of living water. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will teach you how to begin to dig wells in the spirit. And you will know when you have reached exploration and you will find well and you will find oil in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. That the Lord raises you up even into the survival for many generations. He raises you up. He shifts your mind even into interventions that your mind can intercept communication and things of the spirit. The Lord will cause you to cry out for things that are in, on his mind, for the burdens in the heart of God. And you will understand like Noah did, and he built for God. You will understand. You will not be given just to the things of the world, but you will be given to God. God will bring you into the posture of heaven. The posture of heaven. I pray for you that everything around you aligns with God. Everything your calendars, your timings, your systems, your purposes will not be perverted. Everything under the order, there is an order in heaven aligned to the order of God in the name of Jesus, aligned to the spirit of God, aligned to God and his eternal purpose. You will not miss it because God does not miss the Bible says that which is committed into his hands is safe and secure. That which is committed into his hands safe and secure. God will bring to you the internal structures you need to set in your life and external structures in the name of Jesus. Every season of your life, every transition happening in your life, you will be able to mark the transitions by altars and you will know that indeed God is the one that has called you. I break every spirit of lethargy in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every spirit of lethargy broken off of you in the name of Jesus. Every un unholy satisfaction broken off of you in the name of Jesus. He will bring the, the, the hunger for more of him. He will bring, he will bring the, the grace to do more in the name of Jesus. Everywhere that religion has bound, broken in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. He will give you grace to come into the Kronos and the Kairos of your time in the name of Jesus. Every engineering that is not of men. <laughs> Every satanic engineering that is not of God. Broken and dismantled in this season that your eyes will see it. And you would know. And you would know. You see, I was going for a walk. Ah, I need to round up. I was going for a walk and I, I was climbing a hill. And the Lord says, lift up your eyes. I was like, ah, is this scripture we're doing now? Okay, I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. I was just playing with God. I lift up my eyes. But as I was lifting it, I was like, ah, ah. I was not wearing my glasses. I wear glasses. I was like, hmm. He says, see, that's what I was saying. I was like, I don't understand. He said, sometimes we're unable to lift our eyes because the eyelids are heavy. And when the eyelids are heavy with the things we have consumed that are not him, we then don't see him. We don't see the newness that he's already bringing. We don't look to behold him. And he says, break the spirit of heaviness over the eye. It's not just blindness, but it is, there's a heaviness, a heaviness that comes upon. And then people, you know, they are not squinting in the spirit and they can't really know in the name of Jesus, every heaviness, not just in the spirit, but in the eyes and we can lift up our eyes and see and behold the new thing that God is doing in us in the name of Jesus father I thank you I give you praise I glorify your name thank you for all that you have done thank you for the grace thank you for your people as they continue oh God they are strengthened on this fast Lord God I ask that the heavens be open over each and every person that they would receive oh God clarity concerning what you want them to do lord god that they will receive downloads oh god let the scrolls let understanding be given let angels be activated 
Let angelic ministration, O oh God, begin to flow even for your people in this time. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let dreams be restored. Let dreams be restored in the name of Jesus. Father, everything that steals dreams, and you dream and you don't remember two people here, Lord, today it is broken off in the name of Jesus. You will dream, you will remember, because he seals instruction even through dreams and in the night and he will give you that for which you must accomplish even through dreams in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. Um, this is our, is it our official last day with you today? This is the last session, right? Thank you so much. Um, you've received a lot for you to digest, um, but just, I'm, I don't think I will open it up, but one of the words that the Lord gave me yesterday was every tree produces after its own kind. Everything produces after its own kind. Um, and I began to unpack that. And I, I, like when I heard you say it, I was like, okay, God, do I deliver that now? And, but I, I know you guys have, um, you've received a lot. So I think I will hold it. I will, hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I will hold it and deliver it some other time. But I just want to appreciate it. Thank you so much for appreciating, Doc. Um, there is there is much God has, and hopefully, I don't know. I might deliver it in Salem, South London. To be fair, <laughs> I might deliver it in Salem, Salem, South London, or here. We don't know, but I appreciate the grace of God on your life, and thank you for provoking us um, unto good works, for laying down structure, um, blueprint for us to follow. I appreciate. I appreciate that. Um, would you bless Dr. G, please? Would you, the prophetic doctor, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. I don't know if this is, it's, it's, it's because of me. It's because of me. The Lord is God in my heart. The Lord is, okay. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There is a war on productivity. There is a win, a spiritual battle. Specifically, I heard, I'm not delivering it today. I'm not, I'm just giving you, I'm just, I'm not delivering it. I'm not, I'm not. Uh, you've had a lot, okay? Um, there is a war on productivity and the things that she uh, gave today is one of the keys to help you to wage the war uh, wisely uh, so that you can win. And so we appreciate the grace of God on your life. And we pray that you will be a partaker in the name of Jesus. You will be a partaker in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your hands will not grow slack in the name of the Lord Jesus. Even as you spoke about building, and I know you're one that God has called to build. The Lord give you and download blueprints. You will build according to pattern in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that which you build as, as the test comes, we know every man's work will be tested. I pray that both you and the work will survive the fire and will make it in the name of the Lord Jesus. It will not just be you, but you and the work. It will not just be the work, it will be you and the work in the name of the Lord Jesus, even according to Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. Your work, when it is tested, will stand. The Lord give you wisdom on how to build knowledge and understanding to furnish in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will not just build, but you will furnish in the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak grace to you, grace to you, grace to you, grace to you. That which God does in and through you will be undeniable in the name of the Lord Jesus. They will not be able to deny in the name. You know, they couldn't deny the Christ. They couldn't deny his wisdom. They couldn't deny the works that he was doing. They didn't like him, but they couldn't deny. I pray it will be undeniable 
in the name of the Lord Jesus, undeniable, with proof. The Lord back up his word with proofs in the name of the Lord Jesus, with proofs in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. You know, I can say I'm very proud of you. God bless you all. Uh, we're back tonight. Today is what? Wednesday. Uh, maybe I'll deliver this Wednesday. I don't know. We'll ah, Rev, I'll deliver it now. <laughs> Rev. Oh, let's see. I can, all the doctors are coming for me. Even Dr. Ruth sent me a message privately. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. All I right. know, she's teasing us. Like I'm really not. I'm just I just know you. You know, it's actually not a big word. I just don't want to, you know, of his fullness, you've received grace upon grace. So I want you to digest this grace. It really is not. Okay. Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Let's let's quickly go. Let's quickly go. Quickly go. Quickly go. Quickly go. Quickly go. Quickly go. Quickly go to Genesis chapter one. It's not, it's not, it's actually, I promise you, it's not, it's not even like, whatever. I just thought you've, you've eaten and you're full, you know, Genesis chapter one, verse 11, it says this, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And so it was, right? And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. It was tough. It was good. So the evening and the morning were there. If you go to verse 24, Genesis 1, 24. Let's go from 22. And God blessed them. What's, what is he blessing? You know, the, the creatures he's made. He blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to its kind. And so it was. And so God made the beast of the earth according to its kind and cattle according to its kind and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. You see there, both animals and vegetation were instructed to bring forth according to their kind. And God said they are very, they were good. Doesn't it's not very good, but good that they were tough. Tough, as she alluded to, tough is a word for good, but that word good is not like we say it in english i don't even think there's any other language not even yoruba would cover the meaning of tov in the hebrew tov is not just good it's not just pleasant it's not just pleasurable it is and i want you to listen it means something that is capable of presently engaged in the process of and destined for completely fulfilling the divine purpose for which it was created. I want you to hear. It means being capable of, presently engaged in the process of, and destined for completely fulfilling the divine purpose for which it was created. Now, I was talking to God, I was like, so you said good concerning, I don't remember you saying good about man, but why you, when you created man, you didn't call us good, but then you see this. Man was empowered. The word blessed is not just a nice saying, it's, it's, it's an anointing, it's a, it's a grace. It's a provocation by the spirit of God. The Bible says that he blessed man. First of all, he created man after his own image. Everything else had its own order, its own system, its own kind. And I know we say mankind, but the original blueprint of man was not man. The original blueprint of man is God. I don't know if you hear me. 
God created man after his own image and after his likeness. So it is not, I know we say mankind, but I, if you allow me to play with words a little bit, I would say mankind happened after the fall. We are of the God kind. Do you hear me? Beyond me, do you hear the spirit of God? We are of the God kind. And so the God kind on the earth was told saying, be fruitful, produce. Not produce after yourself, be fruitful. If every, the law on earth is that everything produces after its kind. <laughs> everything produces after its kind. I don't think, I don't know if you're hearing me. Everything produces, my God, after its kind. Wow, everything mm, produces after its kind. And the Bible says, after God had made man, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. Mm -hmm. Dominion, dominion, everything produces after its kind. Then the Bible says, then God saw everything he had made, including that which was of the God kind. He saw everything and that he made and indeed it was very tough it was very good that means mm -hmm, you included in all god has made have you have you're not just tough you are very good you have what you have what, the capacity to you have you are capable of you are presently engaged in the process of and destined for completely fulfilling the divine purpose to which you were created because included in the summation of god in creation is that you are very tough and i know i know there was the fall but if you fast forward beyond the cross and you get to the epistles and you get to ephesians chapter 2 the bible says you're saved by grace not by works lest any man should boast. But he doesn't stop at your salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. You are recreated anew in Christ Jesus. So you are able. My God, I don't know if you heard me. You see, I didn't want to deliver it because I don't know if you hear me. I don't know if you get it. Do you get it? Do you get it? Let's see it. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's go to the NLT. Mom, I am part of your convert to the NLT translation. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 in the NLT for we are God's masterpiece he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago what is it I can't what is I can't there's no I can't in God because in Christ Jesus you are of the God kind you have been recalibrated to your right kind you're no longer mind kind you're of the God kind and because you're of the God kind you have the ability you have the can I can I I can I am very tough I can I can I can because I am created anew what is barrenness i i create after the god kind that means what i produce what comes out of me is not on the level of man what is mankind i'm of the god kind what i produce will make you see god because i produce of my kind and my kind is god did you not read that we are partakers of the divine nature come on now i need you to say i am very tough oh and then when you know the meaning of tough which is good when you say surely goodness, you're not saying it like oh, God, goodness, because you know, you know, it's not just goodness, it's capacity. 
it is ability it is i am functioning according to the purpose i'm not missing the mark i'm not afraid to miss the mark are you with me i'm of the god kind i am very tough but it's it's the understanding the order that you're from you're not you're not a plant you're not an animal forget all this evolutionaries i didn't come from no monkey i'm of the god kind when god was looking for what to create me after he created me and fashioned me after the god kind How can you not produce? How can, how can, there's no barrenness in God. There's no unproductivity in God. I am fashioned and engineered to produce. I am fashioned and engineered to produce. I am fashioned and engineered to produce. And what I produce, the quality of what I produce is of the God kind. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. So as you go, see yourself well. See yourself. <laughs> see yourself well. Of the God kind. Come and declare, I'm of the God kind. I'm of the God kind. I'm of the God. I told you. It's something you probably heard before. Have you heard before? But he I'm of the God kind. I'm pro I produce after my kind. I am of the order of the Elohim. Of the God kind. I produce after my kind. I am very tough. Very tough. Study the word tough as she said. But when she was speaking, I was like, Lord God, really? I'm trying to sit on this. I'm trying to marinate in this. It was my birthday message. You're going to let me tell them my birthday message? My birthday message, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, let there be an engineering of our mindset to shift to this truth. Let this word bring light and understanding that we may walk in it, my God. Thank you, Father, that as we build, we build of the God kind. We produce of the God kind in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba. We love you. Amen. Amen. All right. I'll see you later today by the grace of God.